Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com here. It's a rather soggy Friday afternoon here, but I think that the wines I've got here today are going to lift my spirits. I've got five champagnes, three from Mum, two from Perrier Jewett. They're, they're all owned by the same company, so... Um, but do they taste the same? Let's see. Start off with two rosés. Uh, Mum, non-vintage rosé to start with. Rather nice, pretty. Uh, it's what they call partridge eye colour. I don't look too many partridges in the eye, but... Um, that's what the colour, that's what, the salmon pink, if you want to uh, describe it as something maybe a bit more, more familiar. But it's smoked salmon, really. Well, it smells clean and it smells like it's going to be quite dry, toasty. There's a bit, it doesn't feel like it's going to be harsh and, uh, and too acidic. It feels like there's a yeah, bit of toasty maturity here. Some red fruit, raspberries, a bit of strawberries, ever so slight dusting of cocoa. Good. Maybe if I've got a problem with it, it just feels a little bit young. I've got a feeling if I were to keep that bottle unopened, of course, uh, give it for another year or so, it would have mellowed nicely. And uh, But as it is, quite nice, fresh, juicy, lots of red fruit, nice mouthful. Let's see what the Perrier Jouet like, is like. Again, non-vintage, I think. Yep, Blasson Rosé. Um, yes, maybe not quite as um, salmon-y in colour. Uh, maybe a note of orange, orangey pink. Very pretty colour though. Um, smells slightly more whiny. It smells, um, yeah, there's, I, I get the, a bit, a bit more of that Pinot character coming through here. Maybe a bit of the chocolate, some of the plums. Uh, again, it smells like it's going to be quite uh, fresh and juicy. I don't know whether that's actually got um, a little bit more um, sugar in there to round it out or whether it's an older wine. Uh, but it feels like it's got a lot, lot, lot softer, uh, fleshier flavour. It's got nice flavours. It's got bits of cocoa. Um, again, some of these red fruits, a bit of floral character, some toasty, yeasty action going on too. Yeah, PJ wins that for me on those two. Let's see how um, the two square up to each other. Higher up the range. Now, I've got two wines from Mum. Two, I think they're two prestige cuvées. Uh, one of them is called uh, Mum de Cremont, used to be known as Cremont de Cremont, but um, then Cremont took on a, a legal uh, definition and so they, they now call it Mum de Cremont. It's a non-vintage, but quite an old, um, made up with lots of reserve wine, non-vintage. Uh, 2002 Belle Epoque from Perrier Jouet and finishing off on uh, Mum's René Lalou. Okay, without any further ado, let's get into Mum de Cremont. I like these bottles. Probably completely impractical if you've got a wine rack. Well, it smells very rich and welcoming. Um, it smells like it's got maturity to it. Um, and it, it's funny, thinking about the, the Perrier Jouet feeling more mature than the Mum. This feels, I, I don't know what the age of the, the base wine is here, but certainly quite a bit older than the first two. Uh, but it also feels like it's been aged in the bottle, having been disgorged for quite a time. Uh, the, 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 these warm, toasty edges coming through, uh, and it feels warm-hearted. Uh, dough, bread, uh, that biscuity, yeasty edge going on there. Uh, some slightly nutty, some floral edges. Smells good. He said burping. That's the problem. Champagne does make you burp. Well, it's a nice, broad flavour. I mean, in, in, it's not the most subtle of champagnes, but it's one of the most pleasing. Um, it really is, it's got a, it's a mouthful of richness. It's not new world richness because at the finish you've got this nice clean fresh acidity that's just keeping your mouth going whoa whoa fresh fresh uh, give me some canapes. Um, but there's this chocolatey edge, a um, bit of plum there and uh, certainly a bit of citrus but it, it's more this rich creaminess that's, that, um, that, that's driving the wine. I really like that. Uh, not again, as I say, not subtle, but tasty. Wine number four, uh, Perrier Jouet, La Belle Epoque 2002. Lovely bottle. This smells far more backward than the, uh, than the mum. Um, and it smells like, it, it, it's weird, it smells like it's going to be richer, but more backward. It smells like there's going to be a bit more concentration and a bit, maybe a few more, a bit more um, intensity of flavour, but not quite as bouncy and bound out of the glass. Yeah, a lot more freshness, a lot more backbone there. It feels, I don't know what, what the age of the, the base ones in the mum is, but this feels far younger, tighter, torta, leaner, not tortellini, torta and leaner, but 
Underneath, it's got more concentration. This really lovely dark chocolate edge, um, edge of pineapple too. And the, uh, there's this lovely floral character coming through as well. And uh, it, it, the finish, it, it's zesty and it's lively. It's got this, uh, yeah, chocolate, like sher sherbet limes, you remember those? With, with the bit, bits of chocolate in and bits of sherbet and, uh, and the lime as well. Mmm, tasty wine. And I, I, hard to say which I prefer of those two. I mean, they're, they're, they're quite different. One's for, one's for jolliness and one's for elegance. We can all be jolly and elegant, but not usually at the same time. Uh, final one, Cuvée René Lalou uh, from Mum, uh, 1998. So, a decade and a lot old. Uh, let's see what this is showing like. Hmm, there's a, first thing I notice is like a cheesiness. And, yeah, it's ever so slightly, um, yeah, when uh, when malolactic fermentation goes bad, I don't I don't know whether they've done malolactic fermentation here. I imagine it, it smells like that they've done a bit because there's this yeah yeasty cheesiness, um, and uh, it, it it doesn't feel like it's going to take the wine over, but it would I think it would put some people off. Um, beyond that, well, I, I'm going to have a taste, and uh, because it really is quite hard to get beyond that. It's it's like this um, yeah warm ever so slightly yogurty edge. Well, it's definitely the most complex of these five. Um, it feels like the, the most, the, it, it wants to be a wine. It's a wine with bubbles. It feels like um, um, something quite serious from the top end of the Cote de Bone with bubbles. Because there's a firm backbone, there's a, almost like a steely minerality to it. Um, and yeah, lovely freshness, uh, these dark chocolate things flitting in and out. Uh, that cheesiness that you notice on the nose, not there, not 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 doesn't intrude when you when you taste it. Intriguing wine, and uh, whereas the ones before, even the Belle Epoque, uh, I'd be happy to drink by themselves. This, I think, I, I, I trying to finish certainly a second glass of this um, would be a bit of a challenge if you didn't have any food next to it. So uh, I'd almost be like bring that in with the first course and um, have it with uh, some fish, or but it's even got the body to stand up to um, garlicky chicken, I think intriguing it's the, for me that's the one i want to i i i'm not necessarily sure whether i it's the one i will ultimately like but it's the one i want to go back to and sort of think what's going on here what's going on here well what well i'm going off to off to dinner now and uh, i'm going to take those last three bottles with me so um i'll make sure i have a very small glass of each um very small one um, and I will report back. I have a suspicion that I will end up drinking more of the first two than the last one, but I will be keeping going back for a sip of the last one. But all those three are pretty good. See you soon.